So uh, six o'clock meetings to order. First item on the agenda are the meeting minutes to review, a vote to approve. The meeting minutes from November 20th, 2019. So, do you have any comments on those? No, they look, they look fine. Okay. Fine to me. Okay, make a motion to approve the minutes of November 20th. Okay, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The vendor and payroll warrants, those I signed uh, earlier. I'm going to pull up some of the other meeting uh, materials here. on the payroll items? No. Okay. So we don't need to vote on that, right? No. Yeah. no. Okay, so third item. <coughs> Excuse me. Public comment. Uh, do we have any comments from the public uh, on items that are not listed on the agenda? No? Okay. All right. I think we're going to be out by 6.15. Okay, so we have a public hearing first at 6 o'clock, um, a joint petition from Verizon and Eversource to install utility poles and three regulators on Long Plain Road. This is a continuation of the hearing we were having on October 30th, 2019. And are you here for Eversource Verizon? No. Verizon, yes. Verizon, yes. Looks like um, we're going to continue this some more. Yes. yes. My, it, Maybe I'll, I'll summarize what I understand and you can correct me if I'm wrong. There's basically two abutters who have concerns over the location and we've not yet found uh, a location where both abutters agree on a compromise. It seems like the locations that have been suggested are either uh, not uh, acceptable, maybe not the right word, but not acceptable to one abutter or the other. Uh, and my understanding is there's at least one location that might be acceptable to one about it who's been talked to, but the other one hasn't been talked to yet about it. So it, it's sort of at a point where really they, we need a little more time for you to work with the abutters to say, hey, this is our compromise location when we do this. Well, is that a, roughly where we are, do you think? Every source should be talking to. Oh, ever source. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, it, it, which have, which have a person, and I think the name was Mike from Ever Source. Mike was right. So, um, if that's really the case, more or less in a nutshell, then I say let's continue it and get on with other things on the agenda. Yeah, I, I think that's that's the case, and I guess it comes down to, you know, we've got one. You said, well, there's two abutters that are. I guess at odds of where it should be. And one is, is there today that will actually see it where it's put in and the other one, there's no development, nothing there. So what do we protect, the future or do we protect the butter that's there today? Uh, that, and and the, other, the other thing that, that concerns me, uh, Eversource just talks about putting one pole up one additional pole, I guess. I don't know if anybody's been on the River Road site where they're doing it. There's five new poles going up. You have one additional, but you got five that are- Replacements. Replacements that are 10 feet higher than the others. So it's very noticeable, at least that location. And if you're gonna do the same thing here, you're gonna put five poles that are noticeable to the one above her. Well, but they're so. in this location that already exists. I know, I know, so. but still, they're changing the, the yeah. I don't know, the side, I guess, of, of the uh, of the poles. And if they can put five new poles in, well, then you should be able to put five poles anywhere. Right. I mean, new poles in the sense that the material is new, 
right. not new poles in the sense that there's an old pole it's replacing. So if you say four replacement poles and a new pole, yeah. I think that's more accurate. When you say five new poles, well, people well, think okay. something different. Well, oh, okay. Okay. That, so that, let's just true. let's just not be. Okay, you know, but let's I'm be just, careful with our language so okay. that we're actually okay. accurate. Right. Okay. And and okay. All right. So, um, so uh, I would move that we continue okay. the hearing. Uh, our next meeting is December 18th. Do you think that's a reasonable time frame? I don't think so. Um, okay. Then can we say December 18th at, uh, I don't know, 6 o'clock, 6.05, okay. will it matter which of those two times we say? Not a realistic thing. Let's do 6 o'clock. Let's do 6 o'clock then. Okay. All in favor of that? And that's going to be, uh, right. be here, right? Um, yeah, here for Sandy Lane. 6 o'clock. Or Sandy Lane. Continue joint petition. Hearing for <coughs> one We had two votes, right? Yep. Both were in favor. So be it. Okay. Well, the next public hearing we scheduled for 6.30, so we should probably take other business first in case there are other people who want to be here for that hearing. Um, so, uh, under old business, thank you. Thank you. Um, under old business, discuss the status of improvements to club castaways, or we're not expecting them to come here? Right, I suggested to them closer to 6.30 based on the oh, other based. items we had scheduled. Right. And so they may come. So should we delay that item? I, well. I expect him to be here. Okay, you yes. expect he will be here. Yep. Okay. Well, then uh, we've got some uh, new business items in number six. Um, the first order of business there under new business is to appoint Bill Orlowski to the Council on Aging. Um, I, I assume he's willing and he's, he's been informed and he's not, uh, yes. he's not coming as a surprise to him as he watches us on TV. That is the word from the Council on Aging. That he is a, a I would have no objection. I have no objection either. So uh, maybe let's put that in a more positive sense. I'd like to nominate Bill Orlowski to the Council on Aging. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Could I just okay. ask to, if that, that council is not on our website listing people, I think. It oh. should be now. It should be now. I was, I was looking last, to see who else was on there, but within the last two weeks, it used to be buried within the 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 uh, senior center oh. item, and we separated it out now to reflect the fact that the senior center is separate from the okay. Yeah, council I see. On council on aging. aging. Um, yeah. yeah. So the council on aging has for those of you who are okay. dying to know what I'm looking at. Council on Aging members are Marianne Sadowski, Lois Hunt, Catherine McGrail, Ruth Leahy, Denise Govoni, Nancy Maynard, and vacant membership just recently filled by Bill Orlowski. Okay. As soon as he's in and gets sworn in? Yep. Okay. They'll have a full. Then we'll have a full slate. Okay, great. Great. Excellent. Okay. So we've got to discuss and vote to renew the following classes of licenses for calendar year 2020. We've got alcohol entertainment, automatic amusement device, common victual or holder, class one, and class two, secondhand motor vehicle sales. Yep. Do. So there's a spreadsheet oh, yeah. right here that may be used just to track these. Okay. Um, so these are the ones that were that these are the licenses we have and the ones that would be renewed. Want me to read, run through them pretty quick? Sure. And th these are by, this would be by establishment. So Castaways, Club Castaways, has a general on-premise all-alcohol license and entertainment license. Quan Quan, well, we won't renew Quan Quan tonight because that's a seasonal that renews in March mm -hmm. of every year. Uh, Wait We In has an in-holder all-alcoholic beverages license. Um, they have a common victuals license and an in-holders license. Circle K has a retail package goods store, wine and malt. Uh, Muffins has a retail package goods store, all alcohol license and a common victuals license. Um, Waitley Diner, which is operated by NEC Opco, has a retail on-premise wine malt. They have an automatic amusement device 
licenses, they have four of those, they have four games, they have a common victuallers license, Northampton Cooperative Auction has a common victuallers license, um, Tom's Long Dog and Grill has a common victuallers license, Orchard Trailers has a class one um, vehicle sales license, Waitley Vehicle Service has a class one um, vehicle sales license, Zanoni's has a class two vehicle sales license, One Call Does It All has a class two vehicle sales license, and the Waitley Rec Department has a common victuallers, the op that's the operation of the, yeah, the pavilion, pavilion. of the, the stand at the pavilion. Right, where is the Waitley Vehicle Service one? Um, that is, that's located at the Waitley Self Storage. Self Storage place, okay. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I thought, yeah, okay. So the, uh, this will be a renewal for calendar year 2020. But the that type of license, the one call does it all, doesn't need one? Or well, that's class two, I think two, he's, I guess. he's moving a, a away at some point, two. but maybe he well, wants to keep the license until he's... What's the difference class one and two? Um, the, the main difference is class one, um, if you're, uh, you can be a registered agent for a specific dealer. Um, so if you're a registered agent for a, spe for a specific manufacturer, I mean, sorry, yeah. um, okay. then you can have a class one. Class two is the typical sort of used car sales mm -hmm. licenses. Without an association okay. with any particular. Right. Okay. okay. Um, okay. So I did talk with Mark Batty for One Call Does It All. We talked a little while and he, he does want to renew his, his license because yeah, who knows As we're when. seeing, it's going to take a while for the CCC to likely get through yeah. Yeah. the licensing process. So. Yeah, that's what, that's what it looked like to me. Well, um, in, I mean, in terms of we haven't had any, any issues that I'm aware of with any of these? Um, yeah, I think the the only issues we had one uh, earlier in the year with muffins. They came in. Oh, talked oh about yeah, it. That's that was, correct. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah, um, we had under the previous management any number of suspicious things uh, going on at the club castaways with the new management. So far, so good. Yeah. Um, there are some pieces to the conditions of their license, though that are in question, which will be discussed in all likelihood uh, sometime after 6.30. So uh, I think I myself would want to kind of reserve judgment on that until we've had a chance to talk to them, but I have no problem signing the licenses for the, is signing to have any time? Yep. I have no problem signing the others tonight. And we've got one more meeting before the, the end of the year, which is the deadline for this. You want to postpone this till next meeting then? Um, just the castaways. The others I don't have any problem with. Um, and be, and they're going to be here in front of us, so we could come back to this. Well, later. We come back to it, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Just just as a as a procedural matter, I we have Amy has not gotten renewals back from uh, Tom's Long Tom's Long Dog and Grill Zanoni's and One Call does it all. So any motion would be. Oh, pending receipt of the the fee and the paperwork, but oh, okay. our understanding is that those want to be. They okay, how about the the other like five J? Do they need license for anything? They're a farm stand. They're a farm stand. It, it's treated as a farm stand currently. Okay. Okay. So are you saying, Brian, you would rather have us come back to the whole thing? Yeah, I think right. I, or I, I, can, I, I mean, we can start signing these. We've got about 15 minutes before 6.30 arrives. Yeah. Okay. I think there would probably be a motion. Well, yeah, I mean, there should be a motion at some point to um, approve these. So I don't know if that complicates things. Well, I, um, I'm happy to move to approve at this time everything uh, except the castaways and let that 
cast race be something we come back to after we've had a chance to chat about the conditions on their license? Pending the receipt of uh, and pending, pending the fee and the paperwork. The, yeah, pending fee and paperwork on okay. on these. And the effective date is January one on all of these. Yep. Okay. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. This one's the most controversial. This is the rec department. Oh, the yeah. rec department. Well, yeah. I just want to put them in a pile over there if I don't grab them out there. Yeah. Okay. That's not the end of cooperative auction. This like on the rice paper with the fancy stamps or anything on it anymore. Nope. This is muffins, general market. So this is the alcohol licensing common victuallers. So there's two sign here. Okay. Later down I stand. think it might be combined, but I'll check to see if it's oh, okay. further back here somewhere. This one is Circle K. Pictures, amusement, amusement, amusement. Was it amusement? It was amusement. a separate one for each. Yeah. Okay. I want to start the tax classification here at 6.30. But if we can at least make some progress on item 5A under old business during the next 10 minutes, then maybe we can do that. Unless you think town administrator updates can take 10 minutes. 
it, it sh can take less than 10 minutes probably. Uh -huh. Well. But we don't know how long it's going to take for the approval. So that could take only 10 minutes today. So, um, I, yeah, I guess I don't have I mean, I don't want to take a 10 minute break, I guess. We've got at least some things we can do. So, right. Um, so with the, with the caveat that if we go over 10 minutes, I'm going to shift over to the tax classification hearing, then um, let's go to 5A. Um, to discuss the status of improvements in Club Castaway. So I know we have a flurry of emails. Maybe, uh, Brian, you're in the best position to summarize those. We did. Um, so we have several emails that I had sent you guys. One from, oh, one recently from Nick and one from Julius. Um, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to read those. Yeah, I was. Uh, I read through it. I don't know that I understand uh, everything fully here, um, but uh, uh, I do understand from here that they have a better idea of what is required and what order things would could happen in and a timeline. Uh, yeah when things could happen. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe Nick has a little bit more. Yeah. Or can clarify a little bit more. Probably better than I can. Yeah. Do you want to? Sure. Uh, so copy it? Here we go. Or? Uh, sure, or, or come closer. It's easier for the, the person on the camera to. Uh, can you read that? Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, okay. We, um, we did check in with ComCom. -Com. Okay. Mm -hmm. We provided them with the setbacks uh, for the fence and the property. Turns out we have almost more than double the required setback. So that kind of satisfied any, any type of zoning meeting that we would need. Um, as far as CONCOM, they did tell us that there's uh, endangered muscle mams or something like that in the creek or something like that. So uh, muscles everywhere in this town. So interesting. They asked us to just not let debris flow over into the creek to keep a really clean job site. Um, which is no problem for us. The hard part was designing an engineered plan without like a final step from CONCOM or from the building department was hard. We both, we need their input. The building inspector today said um, he would like to see, uh, he does want a drawing and he wants to know about the rebar and the cement and what we'll actually use, like actual, the actual materials. We did hire an engineer. He's gonna draft the plan and um, basically create the list of all the materials that are to be used. I believe for the, the timeline, we, we do need another, I wanna say another two weeks for the engineered plan to be submitted to Inspector Roberts. I'm sure he's gonna have some feedback. Uh, correct, yep. This is the feed. Yep, right? yep, Brady Consulting. This is someone Julius and I work with a lot on, on a lot of projects. Um, they're, they're just good consultants, they're, they really are. So he'll, he'll draft the plan. He said he needs a couple of weeks. There may be some, some kickback back and forth between the building department and him just to get the right materials down. Um, but this, this will not take as long. And then we expect, uh, you know, if we another two weeks for the engineering plan and then another two or three weeks after that just to construct it once the permit's issued. Um, put a final deadline of January 14th, barring if that's for complete construction of the wall and to be completely done. Is barring any type of crazy weather, the timeline seems totally doable, and uh, you know, it seems it seems this all seems very achievable. So, like eighteen more inches of snow. <laughs> <laughs> we did get the lot plowed up nicely. I mean, for the most part, it was the first snow storm was good. Basically, essentially another two weeks or so for for engineered plans. Now that we have uh, the right path forward. And then we don't expect much hesitant uh, a, a delay on the build, building permit being issued after we submit those plans in the next couple of weeks. And then just about four weeks or so to build it. Well, we'll build it quickly. And uh, so far, I think I'm fair to say the inspector's pleased with everything we did over there. We don't have any negative feedback really from him, from Inspector Roberts. So. Okay. So 
looking back, here are, last meeting was November 20th, right? Yeah, we had it 6th and 12th. Since our last meeting, um, you're saying this whole process should take about eight weeks, right? From the moment, from from the moment that you, know, you walked out of the door of the last meeting, fair enough, till yeah. till For the end. So, I guess what I'm hearing from people uh, in town is a huge frustration. You've got laid out a, an eight-week timeline, and if you had done this, starting not even the last week of July, if you'd started this in August, this would have been done by the time you were planning to open. Um, and I think uh, people are rightly uh, indignant about the. lack of paying attention to the conditions of your license. Um, so, so I mean, I, I understand your eight-week timeline might not be to the minute. Um, and as it's written out here, it seems reasonable. You've got it like, there's like nine points in this email and on several of them, uh, this has been accomplished since our last meeting, this has happened, so this has been completed. And there's portions that need to be, that would be completed after this. So that's my main comment is it's not just me, it's other people who've written to me and said this is outrageous that you're not paying attention to the condition of the license. So are you hearing anything, Fred? From, yes, um, but let me ask you, where are you getting, eight, where are you coming eight weeks from? From the from, from our last meeting, so six oh, okay. weeks from today, eight weeks from the time okay. that they actually started getting serious about complying with the conditions. Okay. I would I would just argue up until our last meeting they were not serious about complying right. with the conditions of the license. Okay. What what have you done to uh, contract contractors to do this? So we just got the approval today from Inspector Roberts as far as the go-ahead. Now we've signed up an engineer to actually draft the plan and label the materials as far as the steel grade gate, what type of cinder block it's going to be, what material, if there's rebar going into the ground. The engineer needs a couple of weeks to, to draft the plan uh, to Inspector Roberts, Roberts specifications. So once we have the plan, um, well, actually, at the same time, we're getting quotes from Mason. So the project's out to bid, but I can't get a final quote from a Mason until Inspector Roberts approves the engineered plan. So that, has, that will have a list of materials, the final, that has everything. Um, so a final contractor's bid will come simultaneously as we submit the plan to Inspector Roberts. The engineer has to draft it. That's going to take, call it two weeks on the high end. And then a mason will take that plan and and basically build it. But I, I do need to, the engineer to create the plan. Now that I don't, I don't have any feedback from ConCom to, to work into the engineer's plan, I don't have much feedback from Inspector Roberts to, to work into the engineer's plan. He can basically draft it based on the current setbacks and, and zoning. We'll give it to Inspector Roberts uh, very quickly within the next couple of weeks. If he's okay with the materials we'll use, so what we'll issue the permit. So what information do you need from CONCOM that you haven't already gotten from them? Uh, I'm sorry? What information do you need from CONCOM that they haven't already given nope. I think I think we're 100% we're okay with CONCOM so long as but we keep the cycling. But you just told me you need to get information from them. Well, we did, yeah. If they, if they wanted us to use a specific type of material or they had a recommendation, then so the, the engineer. So that's the information you would need from CONCOM. Okay. But we're good there, so no, no, they have no, no request. So they kicked, they basically kicked it back to the building department to specify the materials. So now, that's where I'm at with uh, the building okay. department. They signed off on the building. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I thought you were saying that yet you still needed information from them no, to get no, to the building. Not right now. No. Okay. But your other, you mentioned number one here, two other departments, planning and zoning. 
Yep, so if the setback was within 20 feet of the wetlands, then we definitely would have had to go through zoning. I think we have like 45 feet or so of setback, so there's plenty of space there. There's So you don't need any, any So the, 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 the number one piece, of the, the very first line in this email is not actually true. Uh, no, definitely. I mean, any if we had no setbacks, like this, this was a major concern. We had a we had to pull up the GIS map. Uh, you know, we looked at certain consultants. Everyone wanted a ten thousand dollar fee just to pull up the GIS map that my partner and I did. Yeah. We saved ten thousand bucks there just to pull it up ourselves and submit it through just to the building department. He looked at the GIS map. He feels that the setbacks are fine. Now it's literally since the engineer now knows that ComCom has no specific requirements for the build. Um, he'll get some feedback as far as what materials the building department would like to. Well, okay, the, the, the sentence reads, any exterior alterations mm -hmm. at 226 State Road require the approval of two departments, planning and zoning, and CONCOM. Well, which seems like three, I but think. planning and zoning is ZBA. I think that's the building inspector. Yeah, that's some, the building some, inspector. Some towns kind of call up planning and zoning department, which the building Okay, so that's, heads. that. so, okay, so I, I read that wrong. I thought that was like our planning board and our zoning board. Okay. I don't believe so. And so the only board in town that is involved is CONCOM. Okay, until these are completed, an engineering plan cannot begin because the final dimensions and conditions cannot be accounted for. So it's almost as if that was a statement from just the starting two weeks point. Ago. Just to give context, yeah. That's just to the give starting context. point from two weeks ago, and then it looks like several of the others statements, like the next three completed since last meeting, mm -hmm. comp uh, comp approved since last meeting, um, and uh, something with a due date of uh, the twentieth. That's on the next item. Okay. Uh, Getting back to my comment about uh, contractors building mm -hmm. this. Have you talked to any contractors? Just the guys who did our fence, but I don't have a plan from an engineer yet because we just got feedback from the building department today I really as far as the process. So the engineer will create the plan. Yeah. At the same time, I'm going to put the project out to bid with Masons who are going to use the engineer's plan to figure out the cost of materials, quote everything, and that's how we'll, we'll come to an agreement with the Mason. But the engineer's plan needs to specifically put in there what materials we're using so that we can get an accurate quote from the Mason. But simultaneously, this happened all. I understand happened that, but have you at least identified uh, contractors that would you would be reaching out to? The preliminary uh, contact with the Mason. Yeah, same, same, contacts. same guys who same guys who who've done my the fence work. The contractor did my fence work and some of the light interior work inside. Um, I don't know if he has a mason for me, but I, I, I need this engineer here who signed off on this with the stamp well, to I mean, just give me some details there. Talking to a mason in advance might be a good idea. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I okay. think that might be. Right. Yeah, that's that's what I'm getting at. So don't wait till the 20th and then uh, decide. Okay, now who do we call to get a bid on? Understood. Uh, right. Uh, you need to do some advanced work and, and at least see if they're interested first. Yeah, I, actually, I, mean, plan, I, have quotes, I mean, I have quotes for a dollar amount, but yeah. nothing has a specific list of, of material yeah. in there. Um, well, not only yeah. the, the dollar amount, but are they interested in, in, in not interested or or able to do it within the next month is mm -hmm. the key question. Yeah. Not not so much. Uh, maybe that's interest, I guess. But uh, From, then the other thing. I, I, I guess on the plan here, you're you're allowing really four weeks to to do this. The, the wall's not entirely the wall's not entirely huge. Uh, I know, but I, I'm say, I, to me, four weeks seems a, a long time. Um, the approximate complete date was January 14th, so I feel like within the next couple of weeks, like the engineer's plan, we're we're pushing right now. So. We are going to have this plan from the engineer submitted to the building department very quickly, and we will get the work done. This is the timeline that, that my partner put in here for January 14, 2020. Um, I'm going to I'm going to trust them on this, and I feel like this is achievable. To actually construct the wall, we've we have talked about it. We have actually we've considered it a, a number of different ways. I'm told construction of that wall with clear weather, no no wet grounds, no snow. Is literally about three to five days max. Yeah. 
So it will happen really quickly. I'm not going to wait till the 20th to get a bid. Simultaneously happening right now as far as having the engineer draft it, and then I'll source in a couple local masons just to be on standby to, to quote it up. Um, I guess I, I'd like to see it worded different number nine here. Uh, something to the fact that the building inspector has approved the wall on January 4th, because otherwise, Who's going to approve it? I, I mean, the three of us aren't going to go out there and look and see, well, did it meet code? Did it meet the, the plan? I, I guess I'd like to see a, a final inspection by the building inspector by the 14th, this, okay. this condition to be written that way. So okay. we have some assurance that it was, it was done according to plan, not just built, but according to plan. Oh, yeah, we couldn't get the final sign. So the inspector, he came back and checked everything we did. Okay. So from the electrical inspector to Inspector Roberts, but um, I can, yeah. we can change this. They have to, before we get the final permit signed off, he has to come and take a look. Okay, well that's what, we, I th I, that's what I would like to see is that final inspection by the 14th. Final inspection. We, um, inspector. Yeah, we should probably put this to the side and do our uh, tax collection, tax classification hearing for this fiscal year, uh, since we're about five minutes after that. No one else has come. So maybe we can start that one on time and those who are here for the tax classification. Hearing that was scheduled for 6.30 can, can uh, so if we can take a pause, okay. put, yeah, a, put a hold on this. Okay. Then, uh, open, um, so for the tax classification hearing for fiscal year 20, sure. I'll the, uh, and notice when I can find it. Eversource. <clears throat> Legal notice Town of Waitley. The Select Board of the Town of Waitley will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, December 4th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. at the Waitley Town Offices for Sandy Lane for the purpose of determining the current year's tax allocation between the five classes of taxable property, residential, open space, commercial, industrial, and personal property. For more information, please contact the Board of Assessors, Joyce Palmer Fortune Chair, Select Board. Here we go. Surprise, you put that on the paper. Yes, yes, thank you for, for that. Okay, so um, do I have any comments from the, I see the chair of our finance committee here. I imagine that this is something you might have an interest in. I have interest and I'm learning as I go. Um, I, didn't, I just found out about the meeting a few days ago yeah, yeah. and um, I'm kind of wondering what's in back of it. What's in back of the meeting and is there a goal are there uh, certain numbers you want to hit? Um, and I'm just here yeah. oh, okay. observing. Um, yeah. Um, I don't think there's, I think this is the start of a conversation. Okay. I think every year at some point we have to decide whether we want to split tax rate or not. And in all the years I've been on the select board, we've never had a split tax rate. Um, meaning, uh, you know, businesses would pay more than uh, residents at, at a, as a rate. Um, there aren't that many towns that do that. Um, now, the information uh, this year, uh, it seemed like, oh, there's actually more to this uh, tax classification because there are uh, other things that you can that you can do. Just, right. There was that. Uh, this isn't the, the same as the thing you forwarded. Or yeah, here we go. Um, that you can do a single or split tax rate. Yep. You can do something called classification exemption options uh, to whether to allow open space to have a discounted tax rate. We could let uh, a residential spaces have a discount rate, uh, have small commercial enterprises have a discount rate. Uh, if you discount everyone's rate, I would say that's the same as discounting nobody's rate. Right. So there's that, um, and uh, I thought there was yeah. So those are the, so those the second group are things that I had not heard coming up for consideration in the past. Yeah, but but they are they are definitely options. But they are options that we have. So I feel like this Brian's given us the information so that we're you know clearly informed, um, and at this point I'm not sure in the absence of something compelling um, that I would want to do a split tax rate or do a classification-based exemption. 
Um, but I, I would be, I, I think it's a good conversation to have and maybe the finance committee would have, if the town had a, had a goal of we want to keep this much open space and we understood that uh, a tax discount would, would help us meet that goal, mm -hmm. then, then I'd be open to hearing something about a goal. But in the absence of a particular goal, I don't have an okay. inclination to go there yet. Yeah. But maybe this is getting the conversation started among boards, such okay. as the Finance Committee. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, so right now, in your mind, this is the beginning point, and we're going to be looking at, you're going to be looking at um, the... Um, um, I mean, I'm sure if we ask small businesses, would you like to have your taxes lower? Yes. Of course. I'm sure they would all say it. And if you asked people who live here, would you like your taxes lower? Yes. Um, it, but it would, kind of in the absence of something to, to guide that. It's just that we've we've never done this. Yeah, yeah and, I know. And in the absence of taxpayers reaching out to you or yeah. others um, with complaints or issues, uh, and I guess issues is probably yeah. um, the way we should approach this, um, then in lieu of that, you know, I, I just don't know what the goals would be yeah. in even entertaining a change. Um, right. not, not that we don't need yeah. it, not that it wouldn't be a good thing, it's right. just that I'm just trying to grasp oh, okay. why well, this Well, I think is every year we have to make, take a vote. And in the, every year so far that I've been on this board, we've never found a compelling reason to do a split tax or a classification exemption. Mm -hmm. um, although in the past, I was not aware of that much about the classification exemption, just the, the split rate. So I feel like I've, I've learned a little bit here that there are some other options if we wanted to tinker with the rates for various, um, well, three specified in the law, open space, residential, and small commercial. Um, I believe the Fred, you can tell me if, if this is incorrect. I asked Cynthia today what the if the Board of Assessors had a recommendation or she had a recommendation and she had recommended that it be a single tax rate with, right. with no exemptions. And yes, that's that's true. That's what the Board of Assessors is. Yeah. Okay. And it's recommending and, and I was told I, I guess before my time here, and I don't know if you were on the board then, that Cynthia did make a, an analysis or, or scenarios of different tax rates for different classes. Yeah. She did that, that would have been at least 10 years ago, 19 yeah, I years I, ago. I remember. She uh, did yeah. something like that. It, it's not an easy task, but she did do it. And and uh, I guess the result was no change, so she hasn't yeah. been doing it since then, but. Right. But I think uh, the, you know, the overall, I, I, maybe an, an initial question is, you know, right now we have a flat tax rate. Is it fair? Is it fair that all of these classified taxpayers pay the same rate? And if it is, it is. Uh, but if there, there are reasons why those tax rates should be varied, then I think yeah. it's incumbent you know, yeah. it, within this process to identify what those reasons are. Yeah. And um, yeah. I think yeah. it goes way beyond the scope of this meeting today. And, and and, but I, the other thing it kind of sets out here is that we can't just make it up, right? right. We, we, we can't just make up a classification and say, oh, they deserve a tax break. Uh, or yeah. Like, I don't know, people with, uh, I don't know, up to 10 megawatts on their roof or whatever, kilowatts, sorry. Megawatts, I can't remember which. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that those people deserve a tax break. We've got basically this law, anyway, gives us three basic categories for exemption uh, or <coughs> a split uh, tax rate for all classes of property. Right. In the, in Meaning the, commercial versus residential. Yeah, the splits are very specific. In They're terms very of the single or split tax rate, it's residential and open space together, uh -huh. and it's commercial, industrial, and personal <coughs> property together. So we can't you can't pick and choose and want to put commercial and industrial uh -huh. by itself and those are the, those are the right. classifications the state allows right um, for, for rates and then for exemptions what exemptions are, are are very specific in terms yeah. of what they allow like the open space discount for example um, 
it lowers the open space. You can put a discount for the open space, but the taxes that would have been paid by the <coughs> open space are shifted within right. the residential open space category. So residential property, uh -huh. the rate that residential properties actually pay increases because yeah. they're making up for that exemption, for that loss of value from the yeah, open space. Sure. For the residential exemption, um, <coughs> It's it, it's really meant to it's really meant to shift the, the some of the tax burden to owners of rental properties, vacation homes, and and higher valued homes. I know the town of Beckett has a tremendous amount of second homeowners, uh -huh. and I believe they're one of the communities that that has oh, adopted okay. this. Um, because it, it, because it, it's an exemption, there's like a flat amount that you, if I understand it right, there's a flat amount that you remove from the value of the property. That are the principal residents of the if taxpayer. If they're a principal resident of the yeah. taxpayer, and then you still pay taxes on the amount of that. If it's not a principal residence, you don't get that flat amount taken off the bottom. Right. If it is your principal residence and it's just like a bazillion dollar home, you might not notice that they're right. <laughs> taking a little bit off the bottom. So in that sense, it helps, it might make uh, uh, the tax rate, effective tax rate for any individual on their homes, uh, more uh, kind of graduated with at least the value of them. Yeah. Now that doesn't always gra uh, go with the income of the person because the value of the home is sometimes the size, and maybe you have a big home with lots of land, but you know, land rich and cash poor uh, is sometimes a, a problem as well. So, and it's I, I don't see any of these like. Is it being an obvious panacea for a particular problem um, that's festering? But now everyone's going to watch this meeting on FCAT and they'll have some thoughts, and maybe we'll hear from people about what, uh, what kind of things they might want to at least look into. Um, do we have to vote on this at this meeting, or we need to do it by the end of the year? Um, it would be helpful if it was voted on at this yeah. meeting. Yeah. So, uh, and we do this every year. We do this every so the, year. So the thoughts are out there. Any thoughts about goals or changes would probably not happen until next year. Um, but at least you'd have time to think about it, think about uh, doing things in a rational way, and what you're trying to achieve by, by whatever changes we might think about making. So I would move that we uh, continue to have a single tax rate uh, without classification exemptions for the town of Whitley for the coming year. That would be my motion. Okay. I, I guess I'd like to, before I act on that, just say that uh, one of the one of the items in here that affects the tax rate that kind of seems to be, I don't know, call it overlooked or kind of routine is there's 200,000 of free cash put in here to maintain a lower tax rate. And I've, I've raised that question maybe to finance before. Mm -hmm. Do we want to put that much in or more or less? And the, the consequence would be to keep the same tax rate every from one year to another. Is that important to keep the tax rate the same? Because we keep going up and down in tax rates. Uh, not a whole lot, but you still keep going up and down, and it's like yeah. it's like routine. Well, let's just throw in two hundred thousand free cash. Is that what we want to continue doing? It's already been approved for this for this rate back yeah. in our last year's last year's annual meeting in budget season. We put that in. Is that something we really want to continue on that amount? Well, free cash of two hundred thousand dollars a yeah. town this size. It's not enormous, Fred. No. And that money is put in to offset taxation at the very end when we know that there are other that there aren't other areas that we need to bolster with that money. Right. So um, it doesn't make any sense to keep it in the bank. So no. why not give it back to the taxpayers? Nothing. Now, as far as the question is, should we not bring that two hundred thousand from taxation? I, I, that's a that's a very tough call. But, but it's it, my experience so far here in the last ten years. That's been kind of routine, and if it's going to continue, there's going to be some point where we don't have that much free cash. 
and then you then you would have to decide you know then the, the rate is going to go up one or the other but I, I guess we need to be we need to be aware of that in the future I guess maybe it's well, what I'm saying we, to, we, need, we certainly need to start this conversation uh, very soon into the game we have a new budget season yeah, right. coming up and we can't enter into this kind of discussion in March um, so January is going to be here soon yeah. we're going to have we're going to put the calendar together for the finance committee and the select board and we should discuss tax tax rates and we should also discuss um, if we want to have a classification system within the town and what that means yeah. who's going to pay less who's going to pay more and why so that's upcoming and I think we should do it Okay, well, I guess if you want that to happen in uh, this budget season, you need to let our assessor, to Cynthia, know to prepare some scenarios of that. Yeah, that'd be. If you if you want, if, absolutely. If you want that, so. Okay. Thank you. Good. Okay. Uh, you made a motion. Uh, yeah, I made a motion that we adopt the single tax rate for the fiscal 2020. Okay, second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And let the conversation begin. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming, Paul. I assume the hearing's closed, right? Hearing's yeah, closed. Yeah, hearing's closed. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Um, with the budget season coming up, you before this, you're talking about the Council on Aging. And I started to think of the um, um, South County Senior Center. No. Uh, the um, what do you call it? Over in South Deerfield, the uh, senior the Senior Center. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, last year we had asked them to, and I I thought the select board sent them a letter that they keep some kind of census because they can't come up with proof that anybody from Wakeley uses it. Now we've supported them, we continue to support them, but it's, um, it's a difficult decision uh, to make if no one from the town is using it or has used it. Okay. So this is, uh, I guess this would come under the category of anecdotal, anecdotal data, which we call anecdata. Yeah. At the Wakey Cultural Council last night, this very topic came up. And uh, one senior who was there, she said, yes, people from Whaley definitely go to the programs at the Senior Center. Uh, she said, yeah, in proportion to our numbers, I mean, we're a smaller number of people than sure. Deerfield is, so uh, in proportion, it's a smaller number. But uh, she definitely said that people from Whaley do use the uh, South County Senior Center. So it's not zero. So when you say nobody uses it, you, I don't know if you meant zero or practically nobody. Within, but, uh, within but, that range. Right. Because that because we were talking about funding programs at the senior center. Yeah. Um, and that uh, so that's why that came up at the Wakey Cultural Council meeting. Um, but I think it's not zero. Mm -hmm. But it would be nice if they had some It would be a hard thing to do. Right. But yeah, knowing that the 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 senior center director probably works many more hours than she's paid. Sure. Um, adding something to, to her list of things to do is, uh, I guess, making that a priority is that's a question. Right? Sure. But does I mean does do they know? Do they people wear bracelets that say what town they're from? Uh, well, well, I, 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 yeah. I don't think we're asking for verification or birth certificates or anything like that. You're from Waitley, check. Deerfield, check. You know, and at the end of the month, yeah. here's the utilization. Oh, okay. I mean, that's not a... If there's, yeah, if there's an easy way to do it, I don't mind uh, asking them to, to do something. I mean, what, what do they keep in track of? The, the, the people that say go there for meals or go every day? Or the ones that go on shopping trips and sightseeing? I, no I, I mean, you, you got a range of activities. Everything. Maybe Whaley yeah. people don't go there to eat, but I they mean, go on a bus trip. You're and, and you're coming to a town asking for money. Yeah. That it's incumbent upon you to prove to me and this town that they deserve the money from this town to support individuals from this town who are going there. If they cannot do that, 
I'll tell you, in, in my eyes, you don't deserve money. Yeah. It's incumbent upon the asker. Okay. Those that are asking for funds must prove why they need the funds. Uh, this, this would have been really good under uh, comments related to items not listed on the agenda. Just saying. Move it. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're back okay. to uh, number three. Uh, right. See, so so it sounds like, a, would it be then a good idea maybe to have Brian or Amy draft a, a letter that we can sign at our next meeting and ask them to start in January? Can they give us some rough numbers right. uh, for, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know, when people walk in, do they sign in? I don't know, if they do, then add a checkbox. But that I don't was, know that people I'll, sign in. we had this discussion with them last year. Yeah. And it was sort of our understanding at the end of the discussion that that is what occurs. Okay. When they enter the building, they have some kind of sign in of some sort. And it wouldn't be difficult right. to identify what town they were coming from at that time. Right. So. I don't but think I it's don't a burden. Know, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to imagine walk, walking. What if you've got a friend who's not from one of the three towns? Would that discourage you from coming at it? Maybe other. Be other. Other. Yeah. Other. Okay. But along the, the, the same lines of, of uh, Whateley residents attending group uh, regional functions, put it that way, have we ever asked for the Tri Town Beach? Who goes there? Is it mostly Whateley or is it mostly Deerfield? Well, we and, 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 and what's the, what's the proportion? Are we paying our fair share or not? Or more? I don't know. Same thing. Same thing, right. Exactly. So we should do it there as well. Um, I think they have, I think they at least have information on oh. passes that are sold. For people who buy passes. That? Okay. <laughs> and they give us, they give us information on the school. The school We've tried to get it. information concerning Tritown Beach. Um, Quite some time, now. Brian. Yeah. We've had those discussions, and there seems to be a difficulty in getting records and having an understanding of what the underlying costs are to the Tri Town Beach. Um, and I'm sure that discussion will happen again yeah. in two months. So um, it seems to there's kind of a pattern here. Yeah. A little bit. Okay. Well, okay. If, well, if you had a letter in mind to send them that, so us signing it would help. Okay. And I'm willing to sign a letter okay. to, to the effect of, hey, we, we want some data. Yep. We love data. I teach physics. I love data. <laughs> uh, and so does everybody else on the finance board. They want uh, data. Yeah, I just feel like you are my people when I come to your meetings. Okay. Yeah. We would. Okay. 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 All right. All right. So, um, at this point, um, back to castaways. So, what do we need okay. to? I, I guess to do? I was uh, making a comment that. The, okay, I'll say that the schedule to me looks reasonable here, but I would like to see a final inspection from the our building inspector, Franklin County building inspector, by the January 14th date. I feel comfortable with that. Okay. Uh, and maybe take off the, uh, the approximate, just a completion date by January 14th for the building inspector. If you can't meet that date, I, I guess we should know before January 14th. I, I think it, well, I, I'm in a position here where I, I've been told by people, yeah. you know, this should have happened in August. This should have happened in August and September. This could have easily been happening within the first three months that you had to work on this. And I think people are rightly um, are, are rightly upset about that. And um, I came into this meeting thinking I'm, I'm just not inclined at all to grant an extension on the conditions. Um, I, 
I think that might be the fastest way to get the conditions met. Um, is if we don't grant an extension, and then there will be time pressure on on your side, because I know with the first extension that was granted, we didn't do anything with the first two and a half weeks, three weeks of that extension. This one you've done better with, um, and with something in writing that was actually a big improvement to uh, our discussion two weeks ago. And I, I guess I also, not as a motion, but by item discussion here, like to see progress at our next meeting is uh, what, 18th? Your next meeting is December 18th. 18th, whether, Joyce, do we want to change the 20th to an 18th to make sure we get something by the 18th? Or do you want to leave that the way it is? Leave what the way it is? The state of the 20th. The date of the 20th that I see in here is There's two when dates, we, number four and number six. Right. Um, so we'll know what that's about. Meeting. Well, that's when somebody else is supposed to report to them, right? Inspector well, Roberts. I think right. that we we'll have the email engineering today. plan submitted to the inspector on before that date. I think I have a conflict, though, just personally on the 18th. Um, so whatever I owe, I'm, I'm happy to submit before then. If I'm not here, then um, Julius or Council will be here, but um, so you're saying you want something submitted before the 20th to just to have it ready uh, for that uh, meeting? Yes. Uh, Fred's saying something. Okay. I, I, I think that's doable. Uh, two days. Of, well, I'll have this for you before the next select ones meeting. Okay. So engineering plan on or before 12 18. Okay. To me, that doesn't change very much well, because the, I mean, the problems have primarily been in the past. Right, but at least we got specific dates when we want something now and not deciding in our next meeting. Well, it's got two days left, so is that enough to? I don't think. I mean, you, you, so you're saying we should go meeting by meeting and grant an extension to like our next meeting no, and to our next meeting and to our next meeting. Saying grant extension, maybe a status report on by the on the meeting on the 18th of what's going on, and like he's got here to see the final plan what he's offering to provide us. We can act anytime we want, whether we have an, an extension or not. Whether we want to oh. change the time okay. frame on any of these. Okay. But just to make sure that we all understand what's going to happen on the 18th, what we'd like to see, and and I guess my comment on the, for the 14th. Okay, so you're saying that, that you haven't really decided on whether there's an extension here or not? No. No, I haven't. I just... Okay. So what are your thoughts so, on that? If we don't, so you're, you're asking if we don't agree with this schedule here. Uh, I don't think the schedule is something that we approve or, no, or don't. Okay. Uh, this is, he was asked to come up with something. Right, we asked him at the last meeting to come up with this. Or really John asked him to come up with it. Well. John was from the engineer and I was from yeah. the status of the right. contract construction of it. Uh, and if we don't we don't approve an extension, that means it's not in compliance with the license. If he were to open before this is taken care of, yes. So he wouldn't be out of compliance today. But if we were to open tomorrow, we'd be out of compliance with the conditions. And uh, until the conditions are met, we would have to stay closed. Well, and that's, that's his option whether he wants to close or, or no. violate the license. Right. So that's, and violating the license, then that starts a, a different, but violating the condition of the license 
starts a different process. And I don't know that they would want to go down that road. Right. I would hope that they would not. No. I'm here myself yeah. as a courtesy yeah. without Attorney Lesser tonight just to yeah. talk to the town, give an update on yeah. some things. This was a real challenge. It's a business challenge. I agree. It's been really slow on the wall. I apologize to the town for dragging feet. I definitely I looked at it. I put time into it. Now, in hindsight, it's not as complicated as, as it seemed first going into it. It's actually fairly simple now. Um, I would just ask, please don't shut me down. I'm, I'm running a, a good business there. I've got people working tonight. I have people scheduled for tomorrow. I've got bartenders coming in. And uh, just disciplinary-wise, there's been no issues. So the inspector was really pleased. The electrical inspector was pleased with everything we did. Um, this is the plan right here. I'm, I'm held to it. I'll be about the 18th. 12, 18, you'll, you'll have the engineer plan, if not sooner. And shortly after that, um, we'll have this, this wall built. And if for whatever reason, we get hit with a, a bunch of fluke storms, uh, you know, that no one's expecting, and we just get crushed with snow, I will not wait until the 14th, but I'll, I'll frequently communicate, just let you know if there's a problem. But I feel good about the timeline. We gave ourselves some extra time in here. So that we can deliver. But in general, I feel good, and I would, I would just ask, um, please don't shut me down right now. Just, just working. We're working on it. Do we, anybody else have any comments? It's here. Well, you know, um, the guy's got a business in town, and I mean, is it the most appealing business? You can it, put your hands on no. That's immaterial. An issue at this point. Absolutely immaterial. So he had a they they had a a date which they had to have that wall built prior to opening. Um, I can tell you from we, the date of closing. From the date of the closing, they had three months to get something done that if they had looked into it would have easily been done in eight weeks. And they didn't even start all until after three months had passed, after they had asked for a four week extension, and it was three point something weeks into that extension before they even applied for a building permit. So that to me is not just insulting, but it shows that this particular business owner does not care about the details of his license. That's I respectfully the, just disagree. I understand. Totally. I understand like respectfully, disagree. respectfully, respectfully disagree that I totally respect and care about the conditions of my license. I really do. I'm doing a really good job. I respectfully ask that, that you don't shut me down. The wall is going to be built. I understand that. Engineer players are coming. I'm just, the, you know. The context here that we're not here to shut down small businesses. But that's, that's the context, Paul. Yeah. That well, for that's what you have to. Like that's what we all have to live with. You know, you're not going to drive the guy out of town. The guy's got a business. He's got a license. He's got a right to. But do, he's got a license he, that he's about to. Yes. But on top of that, at the end of the day, in three months, you know, you you have the ability right now to put some kind of um, to wrap around this thing. Um, demands I wrap something around it that's hard and fast let him try to hit it if he doesn't hit it you could pull it in two weeks you could pull the license from him. so let him let him sit I would give him I would give him uh, I, I would not be comfortable with extending beyond our next meeting I would not make an extension through January 14th. Then let's see what progress, sorry, 18th. January 14th is the, the completion date. I would not grant an extension on the conditions past our next meeting, which is December 18th, and pending status of this. I would, I mean, that's, to me, that's, that's the compromise position right there yeah. that uh, that this we I guess I'm just tired of being dissed you know so so you're not agreeable to the January 14th date then is that what you said I say not January 14th I extend it to our next meeting and put it on the agenda for the next meeting but okay. see what happens 
Okay, and see if the things that maybe, maybe this will all happen much faster. Maybe when they come in on the 18th, they'll say we're going to have it done by the 31st. I, I, I don't know because I can't predict the future. But what I can do is I know we're going to meet again in two weeks. Yeah. And if there's no progress, then we're you know not anywhere near this timeline. Then I think we have a different discussion on that date. Uh, okay, but but it seems you're without having a January 14th date in there. I mean, it might be at the next meeting we grant another extension. But I would not want to grant an extension that goes into January at this point. Well, I, I guess I'm kind of protecting the town by saying that something will be done by the 14th. He could come on the, on the uh, our next meeting and say, well, you know, it, it snowed for all week and I can't get contractors here, so it's going to be into January. Then we're back again deciding, well, is that a valid reason or not? I, I think it's January 14th is the final date. Let's set that, let him work for that. If he can get stuff done before, before the 18th, fine, great. And maybe before Christmas, get it all done. Fine, I'm not saying that the, no, I'm not talking about the final. Uh, I, I think it's time we to. We need an interim report. I, I just, and, 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 and I, I have mixed feelings about that. I feel like I'm babysitting here, you know? And that's, that, I, I don't think that's necessarily our job either. But it took threatening to not give you an extension on the conditions of your license for you to actually do the work and find out that the whole thing could have been done in, in eight I weeks. I came in and asked permission to open before opening, and it was granted permission to open without the wall, so long as they built the eight foot tall stockade I, fence. I understand that. So can, is it possible for, for myself to come back in here on or before the 18th with the engineered plan that details the materials that we're gonna use for the build, so long as I say January 14th is the drop dead date to get the inspection signed off by Inspector Roberts. Just, I want to stick to this timeline. It's great to have here. We are going to nail it. We're going to execute on it. I'll have an engineered plan. Today's the 4th. I, I feel good that I can make the 18th date. Probably be a little bit early on that. Um, and I feel like January 14th is plenty of time to erect the wall in the back. Um, and if for whatever reason there's a problem that's out of my control that's weather related, I'll communicate with plenty of time. Right, I feel like you, you, what's to prevent us from being here on January 14th looking at an extension to something else because of something else? Have a little faith in me, Joyce. Yeah. I built that eight-foot wall over there. We got that up. Um, like you said before, before we opened, I nailed it. I, inspector came out. The electrical inspector came out, loves everything that we did. I, I, so far, I, I no inspector has an issue with any quality of work that we've done or the manner that we've done it. But so have a little faith in me. I don't think you have a lot of faith in that's maybe maybe that's not the right way to say I'm, I'm it. I'm betting on the town, really. But I mean, I'm, I'm here. You know, I have faith I, in the town. Uh, that's why I'm here. Right, but not enough to actually take care of this during the four months that we no, did here. No, it's just a different. We have a different. Me and you have a completely different perspective on construction, that's right? Yeah, property management, finance, investing, equity. I mean, we just we have a totally different perspective on it. We do. I, For me, I'm dealing with the realities on the ground, contractors, inflated quotes, people thinking that we're super rich for coming in and buy the club and just inflating everything that I put in front of them. It takes a little time to sift things out. But I can assure you by 12-18, I'll have an engineer plan in here, and by the 14th, it should be signed off and incomplete. So, so you're comfortable with allowing them to operate through 12-18, But at that meeting, you want a stamped engineer's plan yep. has been submitted to the building inspector before you will consider. Before I'll consider extending in any, January. A, a subsequent extension to January. That's that's where you are. That's where I am at this point, and, and, that, and, and that I, is a compromise between it, what it I what I am hearing from you know people who are sending me emails saying. They just can't believe that somebody would blow off the conditions of their license and just you know come right. asking for more and more and more extensions. And Nick's saying he can do that. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. And Fred, you also want to see that happen. Right. And you want to go one step further to 
to, to lock in sort of the 14th. Yes. But, but Joyce isn't willing to go there yet. So, I mean, can yeah. we agree And I'm not really willing the, to go further than the 14th anyway, but I, right. I'm really just... Can we agree to go to the 18th? Just, yeah. just, so, that just so that... Like, I have a quick question. We can, we can, the, the licensing yeah. board can't make comments on the materials I plan to use on my drawing, correct? You can't, you, no feedback on what steel grade door I use or what, or what rebar oh, I'm using. Wait. So if yeah. the building inspector looks at the drawing, looks at the plan, says materials are good, there's not much for the, the right. licensing right. board we're, to comment yeah. on, right? Yeah, the, right? Where our concern is the license. Okay. And that this. I just won't fall over. <laughs> that's right. And that's the building inspector's responsibility to really that it's not going to fall over. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I'm hearing yeah. as, as, yeah. as a way to sort of... So what are the specifics now that he has to do what, with the aging? Yeah, what I'm hearing is the, so the, the, the stamped engineering plan submitted to the building inspector by the 18th, which is our next meeting, which is uh, sort of a, uh, a mark in, in the road. That's sort of a milestone that you know things can happen. That after that plan is uh, is in, is in there, he's going to either approve it or not. No reason not to execute. If and I'm then, back here by the then that's the thing that is stopping them from executing other things in the plan. Uh, there was some place in here where it said 48 hours. That's uh, what a permit issue or permit. Yeah. Okay. Um, he, he should be able to. Uh, assuming he approves it, he turns it around really quickly. Yeah, that's, that's been my experience. Uh, I mean, too. I think the key is it gives us a measurable. It's a measurable measure. thing. I can call Dave Roberts on the on, on the 18th and say, hey, did these guys submit a. Yeah. What progress points will you need following that? Because that's only the beginning. After, after that, he's got he's to get contractors, he's got to. Gonna, gonna get bids, and then he's gonna have somebody well, put the shovel in the ground. Well, that's I mean, in that that's that's his business. It's not our business to tell him how to do that. But that he's it's he's laid out something that tells me he thinks he can do that within about two to three weeks, right? Uh, yeah. From the twentieth to the end of the month is roughly a week, and then two weeks Four into weeks. January. So call it uh, you know from the time that that benchmark is is met. It's something like uh, three. Twenty-six days, I think. Or? Yeah. I mean, yeah, two to three weeks. Days. Okay. I'll right. four the, weeks. The, re the reality that 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 he's dealing with, and we're all dealing with, is that's yeah. that's the holidays. So you're gonna. Yeah. You're not gonna get somebody out there on Christmas. Or you're not gonna get somebody out there. No. Yeah. So. yeah. But uh, but between now and the 18th, my hope is that you know with that some of the things that are supposed to happen after the 20th are gonna be anticipated and acted on, like contacting Masons and uh, lining up people to find out, are, are you available the week after Christmas or are you available such and such when I'm expecting to have my, my permit ready. Do you, want so, a list, do you want a list of Masons? Do I want a list? I don't want a list of Masons. No. But maybe I'd rather just come back with a, a quote signed up, a contract from a contractor if we could based on the engineered plan. Well, I think you're running the timing issue though, because if you submit on the 18th, and sh and they're looking for a, a list of yeah. people on the 18th. I, yeah. ha I have one like, contractor in mind that he did the fence, he did some of the work. We've already got past the inspections with the inspector. Yeah. He's, uh, so I feel great if for whatever reason that the work is too much um, for him. I feel like if I come here on the 18th and I have a firm plan in front of you stamped with the engineer, there's no way I'm not gonna deliver so, yeah. by the 14th. Exactly, yes, because I will surely not, at any point, vote to extend any conditions beyond the 14th. Fair enough. Without, you said without stamp plans. So why don't we say that? No, just because. Oh, before, uh, beyond the 14th. I got you, January. I got you. Sorry. But why don't yeah. we say that now? I'm not comfortable with that. So on the 18th, we're going to have to. Yeah, on the, on, the, on the 18th, we we see what happens and then go from there. So, so I think Joyce is suggesting we break it up into two steps here. Yeah. I think, and I think we all agree on what the first step is. Right, but that doesn't give us any assurance that it's going to be completed by the 14th. 
not yet. No, but it will no. be whatever steps that they say should happen by the 18th, either they'll have happened or not by the 18th. Well. And that's, that's all. So I think it's a tell way me, to, I what, think what are we, what are we specifically asking for on the 18th? Are the, just the final plan, to see the final plan? Stamped, stamped and submitted to the building inspector by the 18th. Uh, that that can happen very easily. But I have no question with that. The, the, the big argument, the big condition, it, wait a minute, the big condition easy. is is getting the thing built by the 14th. And we're going to be here on the 18th deciding, well, who are you going to get to build it, to build it in the next uh, three weeks? Well, you got these quotes, whatever, but, but what is your commitment to build it? Uh, we, we have no commitment to build it. We just have a plan. We're asking for a plan on the 18th. I think you need to go beyond that and say we want to build by the by the 14th. Tell him no, now. I, I have told him right now that I will not extend his conditions beyond January 14th. That I will not vote that way. And that is, but I uh, I also will not vote for that today. I want to see what happens on the 18th. That's. Well, we're going to be back here again arguing. No, we can, can take five today. minutes if if there's a stamped. Engineer's plan submitted to the building inspector. They were like, okay, that's post, all we're asking for. Milepost stamp, stamp plan. Milepost acted upon. I've got evidence that it was acted upon. This plan well, seems to be being followed. Um, at that point, then we say, well, let's extend to the 14th and not a minute beyond. Okay. Uh, but I would, I would not be comfortable doing that today. Okay. Well, let me go back again. What are we, we're specifically asking for the 18th, just a copy of the final plan, that's it, and nothing else. Stamp because he needs to know for sure, because we're not going to be arguing back and forth, what did you want, and if you don't get it by this date. I feel like we asked for a plan, he submitted a plan. Right. Okay? Now we can grant an extension based on what we're seeing here, and he's promising to get something done by the 18th. I'd like to say, oh, let's see if that gets, let's see if that happens on the 18th. If it does, fine. If it doesn't, then we maybe have a different conversation. So he doesn't have to do anything until after the, other than the plan on the 18th. That's what his pro, that's what his plan proposes. So yes, his plan doesn't propose construction before the 18th. No, but we don't need to see any proof or anything that he's talking to contractors, I, and getting bids. No, that at that point he. The hard and fast deadline is the 14th. And you I don't have that deadline because you're not approving that. So don't, don't say that I, that's no, a hard and fast deadline. No, I'm saying you're that only, right now. I would not vote for it to go beyond the 14th, but I'm not ready to take that vote yet. I want to see what happens on the 18th because it might not even make it past the 18th. If it does, fine. And if it doesn't, it'll be done by the 18th, too. Maybe it, maybe it'll come in and it'll be done by the 18th. That that would be great. That would mean that something that we thought was going to take eight weeks only took four weeks, and it could have been done within the month of August. Okay. So what's your motion? Now? My motion would be to extend the deadline on the the wall condition on the licenses. It's on both licenses. Um, to December 18th and then yeah, and then that's all the motion has to be. And no one's still no one's well, the, allowed that, to use the rear brake area, correct? Right. On the condition that no one be allowed to. Okay, but that, con that condition says a wall should be erected by, or constructed by opening, so how does that relate to a minute ago, you said you wanted a final drawing. I mean, we're talking two different yeah. things. I did. The license says the wall should be constructed. If, if you're you're extending the conditions of the license, you the extended 18th. the conditions of the license. You and John extended the conditions at a meeting that I could not attend. That's already been done. You've extended the deadline for that condition to be met. <coughs> you gave them another month. All right. And they didn't comply within that month. They came back and asked for more. At that meeting, 
we gave them a much shorter extension and a good piece of our mind. Yeah. Okay? Now, this is the de that second deadline is now, today, right now, this very yeah. minute. Yeah. Okay? So the question before us is, are we willing to extend it till our next meeting? And see the progress and then make a se another decision on that day about it. I mean, I am inclined to, if he's really gonna follow this plan, fine, but there's a real clear benchmark right there, right close to our meeting date. Right, but Let's see if that benchmark gets met. That's the smartest thing, Fred. And that's, uh, because but, but, it takes uh, the onus off of you, yeah. and it puts the onus onto the owner. Okay, but but the, the license agreement says that a wall shall be built. And if we're extending the condition to the 18th, we're extending to the deadline says, for meeting that. Well, no, no. If you're if you're extending the license, to me that means that that the wall has to be built by the 18th. And is that what we're asking for? No, we're asking for a final plan. There's a difference. So it sounds like you're not in yeah. favor of extending the conditions on the on the license. Uh, I it's 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 the language of, the language is funny. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm I'm in favor of, of the 18th as a date to get a final plan but but, but as um, but as a legal matter you need to extend yeah. I agree that the language the language is not right I, I, yeah. I agree with that the license the license the condition of the license say that the wall shall be constructed within 60 days right, right. the wall shall be constructed it's true that we've extended that by 30 days, and we've extended that by two weeks. Um, and, it, and it's true that we're, extend, we're extending the deadline to construct the wall because that's the language and the conditions. Um, and that's the deadline that we need to extend. Um, we, can't, we can't extend the deadline to submit a plan because that's that Submit doesn't address the conditions itself, okay. but the, it it's it's a little bit wonky as yeah, to, right. a, a, as as to the language, um, but I don't think there's I don't think we can get away from that. Um, but I understand what you're I understand the issues with the yeah. language, um, but so, as a practical matter, what what the board is extending is. The condition on the license, which, which is the deadline to complete the wall, I think what what Joyce is suggesting is that there be granted an extension um, to complete the wall to December 18th. Um, but I think what she, what she's saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that in front of any the any further extension is, in probably in your mind, any further extension yeah. is absolutely contingent upon the submission of stamped engineered plans submitted to the building inspector prior to 1218. Yep. So what's being asked for, the submission of the plans are for, to get sort of the next extension after the 18th. Is, is that yes, what, that would be, that what would I be a good way of, of uh, summarizing it, what is I, what, is what, what you're mind. suggesting. Yeah. But, but yes, the language is. Yeah. The concept of extending the wall, the construction of the wall to 1218, knowing full well that it's not going to get constructed by 1218, I get it, um, but right. it's just sort of the way that the, the language of the condition is. Well, as long as that uh, explained in the minutes somehow. Yeah. Uh, it's on Tations extended. Okay. Technically, to the well, 14th, the but of a, con a condition basically of that condition is to come back no, on and, before the 18th. The motion will say to until from 18th, and then we. There's an based on your plan, for the plan. I would. I mean, I would be willing to put on the agenda. The agenda item could be consideration of extending the deadline to complete the wall to January 2014. That could be. It could be that specific as something we will take up on the agenda on the 18th. Okay. And you know, because we promised and said it about 25 times, that having that plan stamped and submitted and proof of that to us is the important, if not 
the only thing that we would be looking at that day to decide about an extension. Okay. That's, to, to me, that's important because we didn't really get much action until we started getting you like 20-minute deadlines. Uh, and I, I, I teach students all the time. And giving somebody an extension on the deadline for something is not always doing them a favor. That's uh, my own children included. So. Okay, I, I guess I'll, I'll second that motion with uh, my comment that what we understand will be done by the 18th is a plan and not necessarily the construction of the wall. Okay, so a motion was made and seconded. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So, so just just to just clarify to clear, and recap, though. is that the board have the board the board just voted to allow the establishment to remain open until the 18th of December, which is its next meeting date, um, at which it will consider um, extending that to um, what it seems to be requested here is January 14th in what they're saying is that that essentially there needs to be a engineered you know a stamped engineered plan submitted to the building inspector prior to the meeting mm -hmm. you know um, Not the day in order for it to go well for you right in order for the board what they're telling you is that if that's not submitted to the building inspector that it's very unlikely that they're willing to extend it beyond that the 18th um, Here. The, I think that's. I think that's. Yeah, where they, we that's a good it. summary. Yeah. Oh, Roger that. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I think I don't know this. I think this was very helpful and useful. Yes. That, that, I, I think this is and, really. Right, and when I left work, I had not received this yet, and I was really very. Uh, I was not that optimistic about how things would go. So this came, yeah, I left work at 4.30, so I did not see this until we got here. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Here's my pink This is about later on in the pants. So. Okay. So, um, Administrator updates. Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. Town administrator updates. So, just, well, just to recap for one second. Okay. The license. Um, the licenses. Um. Quant quant will do later because that's seasonal. I'll track down the. Waitley in holders, so we'll have to sign some more licenses on them. Yeah, on the 18th. We voted, I mean, we voted everything, we, didn't vote, we voted everything from the Waitley in to the, to the right. Um, do you want to hold off on, on yeah. the gas waste? Yeah, yeah. Um, John will be here, he's been signing those. Right, um, and I'll track down, we did sign Tom's, Zanoni's, but we voted those pending. Yeah, that was the so last of the k We can sign those on the 18th. Um, all right. We all sat there. And then we can also sign this ABCC renewal form on the, on the 18th as well. Okay. Um, town administrator updates. Um, so the town office lease that we have with, with New Pro, I think, ends in June. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something we'll have to sort of long range, we'll have to sort of think about as to whether we want to continue that, whether we need the space. Um, how is that going? Um, it's going pretty well. Um, there's definitely an increase in activity back there, uh -huh. which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because um, it means hopefully it means that the business is doing well. Yeah. Um, I guess the one concern that I have is that the original lease was for storage, mm -hmm. and it, it might be being used for a little bit more than that. So we might want to think about whether whether that should reflect a I guess mm -hmm. uh, an increase in, 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 in the price. Um, uh, what what did you say? Other activities? So Are they like throwing parties and not inviting us? Or? Yeah, I'm pretty mad about that. I never mm -hmm. get invited to the parties. Um, 
Uh, there's just, I mean, there, there's cars that are parking here. There seems to be people that are working here, sort of on a. Like here. manufacturing. I don't know if they're manufacturing. I don't. I don't think they have manufacturing set up, but um, it, it seems like they've made. There's Office. employees here more often than not. I think there's a desk back there and, oh, okay. and things like that. Um, there may be some type of machine set up in the in the, in mm. the back garage. Um, oh, okay. I don't know what any yeah. of this stuff. It's still mostly for storage, but it's a little bit more of a, a little so bit more So they're not necessarily use. storing the machines. It might be using them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, we might have to say look into what these other activities are and right. do they merit a in rent it, raise. It's not necessarily that there's any noise problems or yeah. um, the way that we have it. Right. The electricity. I don't know if you know they're using more electricity. So. Uh, and, and we yeah. pay, there's no split meter between right. these types of things. So I think it's something we should look at yeah. when it comes time to. Right, because if the rent was based on electricity usage <coughs> for storage and just being able to keep the place at a temperature, that's one thing. Right. But if there's, uh, and that's, I'm not saying I'm against manufacturing, if right. that's what they're doing, but that might, uh, I agree with you, alter the, the rents. Yeah, and it, it, it's more, I think it's more about the utility aspect of it, yeah. the utilities aspect. I guess yeah. I would I would suggest looking at a, an increase regardless of what kind of activity is going there every year because businesses all around rent keeps increasing every year we should yeah. apply a couple percent yeah. increase uh, to their contract uh, figure out whatever is the, in the area is average or even find based on utilities I, I think they should be paying a little more every year yeah yeah I, I, I agree with that because I don't think I, I think it. Right. I agree with that. But Paul wanted to add something. Yeah. yeah just uh, quick. If there is a, a change of use going on there, does that impact our insurance? Uh, it should not. They have they carry separate insurance. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I, I'd be I think personally, I, I would be supportive of storage, or you know, even if they. Even if they have to fix their machines back there out in the garage, you know. But in terms of like setting up a manufacturing line or something like that, yeah, I, 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 I would have some issues yeah. with that. Um, it's about you know, there's I would just have issues with that. I don't want to go into much detail, but right. Well, you have um, to like see what it's, it's manufacturers have a whole bunch of other different regulations regarding safety and right. particulate production and all kinds of other things. So. Okay. Um, so this is a reminder and an invite for people on the finance committee. Um, the there's a there's a meeting um, December 11th. It's not the sidewalk meeting, but that's that's it. December 11th as well um, to talk about the recycling contract. Yeah. Um, and what that's at Fur that? That's at 10 a.m. Um, so just really a quick summary. The what I guess what people call the MRF, the Springfield yeah. Recycling Facility, I think is what it, yeah. essentially what it is. Um, Mass DEP put out a new, they solicited bids for contracts for recycling. Um, and I think they're going to award it to the, um, I think they're going to award it to the MRF and um, there was a pretty significant increase in recycling costs. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what this meeting is about, is to learn more about that. So um, okay. I'll have, we'll have more information, we'll have more information then, but that's yeah. essentially what it is. We, I mean, Franklin County South Waste District had sent us a, you know, that contract and asked us to sort of hold off before we sign it. It's supposed yeah. to be signed before January 1, because that's when it would start. Um, but I think that's an, uh, I plan on going to that meeting, but I think it's an important meeting for us. And, uh, okay. Um, for the for the Finkley County towns, all, yeah. all the Western Mass towns, really to figure yeah. out how we're going to do that. How we're going to manage in, it. In, you know, uh, in in my town, this is just an example. They they recently passed a um, a law or regulation, whatever, at the at the transfer station that any um, any bottles that have deposits need to be separated out. Uh -huh. So if you have a soda can or a beer can, you can't recycle it in the. And what what consequences? Are there for someone who I don't know who puts a nickel? I, I heard about it secondhand. Oh, okay. Maybe you have to jump in and fish it out. Maybe but yeah. I didn't. No. I've just heard 
and yeah. I've been asked to separate. I know it's voluntary at our transfer station. They have a nice area for glass bottles and plastic bottles that have nickels attached to them. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they'll go in and fish them out. Yeah. But not always. They don't think they police it to check and make sure people don't put the nickels and dimes in there. Yeah. So we'll learn more about that. But I think the bottom line is that if we sign this contract, the costs are going to go up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what other option. Are. Yeah. Then we may not have another option. We may not sign the option. contract, but prices are going up, folks. Right. Um, I just, so we had the solar energy and zoning meeting last night. Um, planning board, um, represent the planning board, finance committee. Conscom, Ag Commission, CBA, Planning Board, Select Board, Energy Committee. Energy Committee. Um, it was a good discussion about sort of what might need to be changed in terms of um, solar and zoning, and just a good general discussion about the experience so far in the town. Um, I, I think what's going to come out of that is the Planning Board is going to work to put together some type of some zoning amendments um, to put forward for the annual town meeting. So that's. Uh, to be, yeah. the, the discussion will continue. But I think it was it was a good conversation. Um, just a reminder: the the sidewalk, the chest uh, chestnut plain road sidewalk reconstruction plan open house is also on December 11th. Um, yeah. That's and from 5:30 to 7:30 at the town hall, um, and it's been it's uh, open house format meeting. So that means. There's, got, there's not going to be one single presentation. There's, the plans will be out. Um, several, several of us will be there. Hopefully we have knowledge about the project and people can um, look at the plans, ask questions, make comments on sticky notes. And um, yeah. doing it this way sort of, it doesn't, it doesn't limit people as to if they can just make it at 530. And yeah, it, it allows people yeah. to, some flexibility. Because yeah. I think it's important that we get we get yeah. input on that. Yeah. Is that going to be on the calendar, or are you going to put something out about that? Or it's already further? It's on further? It's on the website yeah. now. It's on the website. It's it was in the school. Um, yeah, which we probably got yesterday or today. In term, this is, issue has kind of been simmering there for a while now. It seems like it's taking forever, but um, the, municip uh, the municipal aggregation. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That DPU is still yeah. oh. sitting on all those plans, as far as I understand. Um, so okay. we'll just, that's just kind of a, hey, remember this update? Yep. Um, the water merger is still something that I, I think needs to be focused on in terms of, um, I guess, in terms of the schedule. I, I think we need to get, I think if we can get the water commissioners to push their engineer, uh -huh. um, they really need to start the permitting process. ASAP. Yeah. Um, and from what I understand, that their engineer has not been very responsive. So oh. I might have to. Okay. Uh, Is there anything we can do? Nudge. To nudge. Um, I, I think okay. I have to make I'll a, sign another anything. Phone call. You write a nasty letter and I'll sign Wait. it. I mean, sorry, Actually, a nice letter. Well, let's see, their offices are right off of King Street. So can you walk over there? Uh, you can stop in, sure. Um, and I know whose head's to knock. Knocking heads. That's what my dad used to say. Okay. Okay. Give me names. <laughs> um, okay. right. so it's just a reminder budget planning <coughs> FY21, that's coming up. Um, yeah. So we'll have to, maybe at the next meeting, we can look at the calendar. Try to figure out, I'll try to get with Paul before that, and we can figure out dates and schedule and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but I, do we still want to meet jointly when we can? I assume. No, sort of. I think that. that we could have meetings. Okay. Right. Absolutely. We did last time. Um, and they would have alcohol, right? But no, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Depends where we go. We have a license for it. Yeah, it's right. one day alcohol license. Um, town safe. The restoration's been completed. You can <coughs> see it at the town hall when everybody comes to the sidewalk yeah, design exactly. open house meeting yeah. they can look at the restored safe uh, so that's been done and then so I think I forwarded it to the to the board and it's also in your packet 
there was an uh, email from the governor's Western Mass office uh -huh. looking to set up a meeting. Um, I don't know if we want to. They want to meet with the select board, or they want well, to meet with the, like, a whole bunch of people at the same time? I think it was a meeting. Oh, yeah. Um, Governor's Western Mass Office has been reaching out to local communities in order to set up a meet in order to set up meeting times with Director Pat Carnival Carnival to discuss any issues or concerns each city town may have and like voice to the governor. I mean, I think that it's either a meeting that some of us would have during the day, or uh -huh. we could invite them to a select board meeting. Um, as long as we have a poll hearing for entertainment value. Then I think yeah. that would be well, that would be the way to go. Well, we extended it to the 18th, right? So yeah, one or two. <laughs> well, well, at least gonna... one poll hearing, and that would be minimum. But we've had multiple poll hearings on one day. I'm just going to copy this agenda for next for next <laughs> meeting. You know, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Just going to play out tax classification here. There know, we but... go. Tax. We got that off. The... We got that off our chest. So I guess I was getting a sense of whether you wanted it to be a huh. full select board meeting or we could have it turn the day <coughs> or folks could make it. I, I, I assume that they don't want to do this in every single town in Franklin County, that they would like to. Is it to the regional or multi-town? Uh, I think it's meeting times with, I think, individually, I think. Oh, I think it is individually. Yeah. Oh. So I, so I don't know if you guys have okay, any yeah. interest or. We and would that be a, that would be a public meeting if uh, if more than two of us were to be there, right. because we'd have to post that. Yeah. Um, but it, it's also whether we have any issues or concerns, which I'm sure we could. I think develop well, some. I think we could come up with a list. Yeah. Um, more date was that again? Whatever it's we the, want. We oh, had the date's set. not set. And it's in but, what? I mean, trying to set this up at the right. beginning of December. Is, not, not a great time. Right. Well, well, classes are finished on the 11th. So I actually, my daytime time is a lot more flexible after classes are finished. Okay. Um, it's not that I can, I can't go, don't have to go to work at all. It's just I can be really flexible about if I need to come in late or if I need to leave early. It's much easier to do that at when classes are not in session. Yeah. Um, although a few of the evenings are already filled up okay. with other things that get put off till the end of the semester but uh, so, so I, I don't have a if it's going to be in kind of the next few weeks kind of a timeline then I actually for a change would be available during the day in all likelihood okay what if I do a doodle poll and we'll figure out availability Sounds does good. anybody take long vacations for the next couple weeks okay, okay. Um, Yankee Candle yeah. town gift ceremony December 16th, 8 a.m., whoever can make it. Yep. Um, I think I forwarded it to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. I got, the they sent me one yeah. as well. Um, I put it on my calendar, and so far, nothing else has not get out yet. Okay, it's fire, fire yeah, department it's this year. fire department this year. Um, I think the we, exciting purchases of hose reels, but I don't know for sure. It might be hose reels. Really it exciting might stuff. Be hose reels. Um, but necessary, nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. So, Okay. Do we have any items not anticipated? Yes, Don. And this would have been really great. Back to public comment. I was going to bring it up, but I was expecting Brian to kind of look at me to give me the clue to. Oh, okay. oh go ahead. Yeah. The holiday parade, the Santa parade, um, will be on uh -huh. the 21st this year. Oh, okay. So it'll be. Got that. Okay, I like this being lined up more than a weekend. Yeah, no, you know, last year it was kind of a, yeah. it was a Wednesday brain okay. fart I had. And you're going to be Santa? No. <gasps> December what? December 21st? December 21st. It's always going to be the Saturday prior to Christmas okay. is what we're going to aim for. Do you have a start time? Uh, we are going to start it at 4.30 from okay. here at the town offices. Um, you will have a schedule online somewhere? Yes, through the Waitley Facebook page. We will be throwing out updates on there. Uh, we are including North Street this year because we do have a place we can turn all the vehicles around easily. Uh, um, so we're still in the process of talking with the fire department and the police department and right. ambulance service. I so. understand we have a form for events like this that you have to get signed off <laughs> in the departments, including the police department. 
that, that's, yeah, well, I mean, like well, anybody else, he's, that's what you're talking about, right? Wasn't the farm no, form? <laughs> No, he's not going to use that form that other people have to use? I, okay. I don't know if that's just private or not. Okay. John Hannum will know about the parade. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. <laughs> will he be in it? I don't know if he will, will be, be in it. Will he be Santa Claus? He won't be the same without him. Okay. So, so okay, just, I mean, you've got some a little free adver, you know, uh, advertisement time here in front of the camera. Cause, and I know we have an audience. I have people who stop me at the grocery store and tell me, about what they saw at the selectmen's meeting, or they send me an email, jpfortunatecomcast.net. Um, but you have, a t can you explain what this is about so that people will know just from watching the meeting online? I, I can do my best. Okay. Um, it's a it's a Santa parade. We have it's an emergency services parade. Uh, Waitley Police, Waitley Fire, and South County Ambulance uh -huh. are involved. And um, what vehicles are in the parade? We have our three police cruisers. All the fire trucks are involved. I think all of them, actually, oh. except for the Model A. No, no one doesn't come out of the shit. It's not good. It's not the winter. <clears throat> and the town highway pickup will pull um, a trailer that's donated from Greg's Auto. Uh -huh. um, it's an enclosed trailer that we put a sleigh that we get from uh -huh. Chestnut Mountain Farm, uh -huh. and we put that inside. We decorate it all nice and pretty for the holidays, uh -huh. and then we just start parading around town. We have a designated route that will be online uh -huh. with approximate times. <clears throat> the first half of it was pretty much accurate last year. Did you say exact times? <laughs> I said approximate times. Once we got out in towards West Waitley, we were we went a little faster because the houses yeah. are further apart. Uh -huh. So, plus the ambulance had a call, so we kind of had to get to a certain spot to let the ambulance get uh, by us all that was safe. You going to slow it down <clears throat> this year? Yeah, we, West Waitley. we're going to try, just especially by the Antea residents. Well, it's very important, a lot of children there. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so people who are interested might just um, hang out in their driveways at the approximate times with their kids yes. or with whoever is interested. Any candy? Watching. No candy because we're afraid that we don't need kids to run out into the street and get run over. Yeah. Good so, idea. Because it is dark. Yeah. You know, we start out here, it is light, but by the time we get yeah. to the other end of the yeah. plane, it gets dark. Gotcha. Um, the one thing that we <clears throat> will ask for residents is if you do come out, bring a flashlight or something that's uh -huh. lit up so that Santa can actually see who's there. Okay. So, because that was one of the big complaints we had last year, Santa had no idea where anybody was. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, because it's it was dark. Yeah. But again, we threw this together in three days last year, and I would be happy if there were three people that I could see in their windows waving uh, to us. Yeah. Well, we had that by the time we got down to the Smith compound. Yeah. So I was pretty impressed. Okay. It was really well received. A good viewing spot would be um, either at the Waitley Inn that night or at the town hall would be better uh -huh. because the business for Waitley Inn would be open. Yeah. Um, but for people from out of town that want to show up and just see it go by it uh -huh. actually goes by the Waitley Town Hall twice okay um, the scent uh, the blue school uh -huh. whatever it's called now yeah now it's private I understand but we go by there twice okay as well so but look online you know the Waitley Facebook the fire department Facebook will also share it it'll be up on Instagram I think the chief can put it up uh -huh. on um, it'll have the designated route it'll have the right. approximate times Terrific. Well, if <laughs> if there is a lot of snow, we will not be going up Dickinson Hill Road for sure, because that's just too steep. But we're in talks with Keith about maybe working up something. But I'd like it to go rain, sleet, snow, whatever. Okay. So, sounds good. All right. But I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Brian and I have been talking about it. Okay, good, good. Because now people can put it on their calendars. Yeah. We're also going to put something out to the elementary school for uh -huh. all those kids to bring home to mom and dad. Okay. That's one. Or mom. That would be nice. Robo, okay. if there's a robo call between now and yes, then, it might be good to I think we did that last add. Week. Because and it was set short notice. Like, put that out, which I think was a huge help. 
Okay, so what do we, I don't think we have anything left. Could I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.